Hi everyone, warm welcome to Mathematics class. In the previous session, we have discussed regarding exercise 2.1. In this session, we are going to discuss regarding properties of whole number. In the properties of whole number, today we are going to discuss in regarding closure property and commutative property. Today we are going to discuss regarding closure property and commutative property. Now you can see here, in the closure property, what happens? If you do fundamental operation between any two whole numbers, fundamental operations are addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. Addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. If you do fundamental operation between any two whole numbers, what happens you can see here, if you take addition, then what happens if you take any two whole numbers, for example here I have taken 1 and 4. If you add any two whole numbers, the result you are going to get what? 5. That is also a whole number. If you add any two whole number, there is some you are going to get the one. That is also a whole number. If you take few more example, for example, 5 and 2. If you add 5, 5 and 2, what you are going to get? You are going to get 7. 5 and 2 are the whole numbers. Even 7 is also a whole number. If you add 0 and 6, what happens? You are going to get 6. 0 is also a whole number. 6 is also a whole number. Even the sum you are going to get that is also a whole number. Then we can prove that if you add any two whole numbers, the sum you are going to get is also a whole number. Then we can conclude that whole numbers are closed under addition. Whole numbers are closed under addition. If you move on to subtraction, what happens? If you take subtraction, if you subtract any two whole numbers, here I have taken 1 and 4. 1 minus 4 is equal to minus 3. 1 and 4 is equal to minus 3. Then you can take another example that is 5 minus 2. 5 minus 2 is equal to 3. Now another one example I have taken that is 0 minus 6. Here what happens minus 6. You can observe here when you are subtracting 1, 1 minus 4 then what happens the result you are going to get minus 3. Is it minus 3 is a whole number? No it is not a whole number. Then it is negative number. Next in the next problem 5 minus 2 that is 3. 3 is a whole number. Yes 3 is a whole number. If you take 0 minus 6. Minus 6 you are going to get even minus 6 is a negative number. Then what happens here if you subtract whole number and whole number. The result some time may get whole number or sometime may not get. So we can conclude that whole numbers are not closed under subtraction. Next we move on to multiplication. You can see here in the multiplication what happens if you take 1 into 4. If you take 1 4 the 4. Not only this number you can take any numbers and you can cross verify. Now you can see here 1 4 the 4. 5 2 the 10. 0, 6, 0 into 6 are 0. Any number multiplied with 0 means your the product you are going to get is what? 0 only. Now here also if you, if you multiply any two whole numbers, not only a two, any two or more whole numbers, the result, the product you are going to get is also a whole number. Then we can conclude that whole numbers are closed under multiplication. Whole numbers are closed under multiplication. Next we will move on to division. In the division what happens if you divide 1 divided by 4, the result you are going to get what? 1 by 4. The quotient you are going to get 1 by 4. If you take another example 6 divided by 2. The result you are going to get 3. If you take another one example 9 divided by 6. The result you are going to get 3 by 2. Now you can observe in the first quotient you have fractional number. In the third quotient also a fractional number. By this what we came to know that when you are dividing any two or more whole numbers. Then what happens sometime you may get whole number or sometime you may not get whole number. So therefore we can say that whole numbers are not closed under division. Whole numbers are not closed under division. So overall what we came to know that whole numbers are closed under addition and multiplication. It doesn't close under subtraction and division. In the same way we move on to commutative property. Commutative property you can see here. Here also here what happens if you take any whole numbers and if you add in any order the result get equal or not we have to verify. For example if you go through addition, now you can see here in the LHS side I have taken 2 plus 5. I have taken 2 plus 5, the same number I am going to change the order and I have taken in the RHS. Now you can see here, here I have taken 5 plus 2. 
the left side I have taken 2 plus 5. In the right side I have taken 5 plus 2. Then what happens here? 2 plus 5 is equal to 7. 5 plus 2 is equal to 7. We are going to get the equal result. If you add any number in any order, the result you are going to get the what? Equal result. In the same way, another one example I have taken that is 6 plus 9 is equal to 9 plus 6. 6 plus 9 is equal to 15. 9 plus 6 is equal to 15. Here I have taken in the order 6 plus 9. Here I have taken in the order 9 plus 6. So 6 plus 9 is equal to 15. 9 plus 6 is equal to 15. Then we came to know that whole numbers are commutative under addition. Whole numbers are commutative under addition. Next we move on to subtraction. If you subtract any two whole numbers in any order. What happens you can see here. 2 minus 5. The result you are going to get is what? Minus 3. 5 minus 2. 3. Here 6 minus 9, minus 3. 9 minus 6, 3. Whether minus 3 is equal to 3? No, it is not equal. It is a negative number and it is a positive number. Here also whether minus 3 is equal to 3? No, it is not equal. Then we conclude that whole numbers are not commutative under subtraction. Whole numbers are not commutative under subtraction. Next in the same way we move on to multiplication. You can see here, here I have taken 3 and 5. If you multiply 3 into 5 and in the RHS side 5 into 3, the product you are going to get is equal 3 5s are 15, 5 3s are 15. In the same way, another example I have taken here 9 into 6, 9 6s are 54, 6 9s are 54. Then here equal results we are going to get. If you multiply whole numbers in any order, you are going to get equal results. Then we can conclude that whole numbers are commutative under multiplication. Whole numbers are commutative under multiplication. In the same way, we move on to division. You can see here, here 3 divided by 5 I have taken. And in the RHS set, 5 divided by 3 I have taken. In the LHS 3 by 5, in the RHS 5 by 3. Whether 3 by 5 is equal to 5 by 3? No, it is not equal. Then in the same way, 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2 divided by 4. 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2. 2 divided by 4 is equal to 2 by 4. 4 here result are not equal then we came to know that whole numbers are not commutative under division by overall what we came to know that whole numbers are commutative under addition and multiplication it doesn't commutative under subtraction and division the general form of commutative property for a whole numbers are a plus b is equal to b plus a under addition a plus b is equal to b plus a under addition a into b a into b is equal to b into a under multiplication a into b is equal to b into a under multiplication i hope you have understood about closer property and commutative property in the next section i am going to explain about associative property and distributive property thank you children